What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna do a diff drop, or at least attempt to do a Australian diff drop on the Ram TRX. Pipe's too, too small for the, I'm hitting the camera, oh my goodness. Our current status is severely stuck. Metal cutting bit. Let's see if we can do some damage with this guy. Ow, my knee. Oh, I just whacked it. Oh man, oh. And this one, don't want to end up nicking my dip. Oh, having this, oh my knee, oh my goodness. Oh, this friggin' bolt. Oh, and said, oh, let's see. I think the front one is closed. Oh, shit. Hey, you're taking the instructions with you, man. <laughs> dude, you take it. Hey, come on, you take him. Oh, dude. Subscribe for more of this. First, we're gonna take some preliminary measurements because we may have to lower the skid plate a little bit. So at the very front of it, at the little, the little uh, rib, we are at 15 and a half. At the skid plate bolt, the head of the bolt, we are at 14 and, so let's measure, this is the passenger side, let's measure even, uh, 18 um, it's kind of hard to see 18 and three quarters roughly right next to the clamp we're at oh it's a little higher we were like 19 on this side so this is the driver side this is the passenger side We got the dyno on the ramps and we're gonna take a look at the kit that we got here this is the on track 4x4 this is the only front diff drop that I'm aware of for the TRX we'll take a look at the instructions in a second this is the box that came in koozie bubble wrap and I separated every part by with its own box so starting with the easiest to figure out this is the spacer kit for the skid plate Looks like we've got four steel, maybe quarter inch washers thick, and then maybe half inch um, aluminum spacer there. And then in this box, and I, I really don't know where any of these things go yet, but very nice piece of billet aluminum. Um, shout out to Pocket Jiggy, my dad, who uh, used to have a machine shop, and we would work on build aluminum stuff like this all the time. Um, so it looks like those two long bolts probably go into some factory threaded holes or maybe a nut that is included with the stock kit. And then we've got some threaded bolts here. And I've separated them based on they were all in their own individual baggies. So in order to just keep them all together and make sure the bolts don't get mixed up. This is a uh, second piece. Very, very nice machine work. Looks like there's a little dip there. I don't know if that's supposed to be or what, but we'll figure it out. And then the third piece is here. And again, I have absolutely no idea where these go, but everything looks like it's machined pretty well. A couple bumps and bruises in the end of the world. It's all gonna look much worse after one romp. So this is the kit. I really like um, the full color because you don't get this very often. And uh, my printer, um, one of them's laser only black ink and the other one's like inkjet and it's complete junk. So we would never be able to see the instructions no matter how many times we tried to print it. So here's the stuff that's included. There's the three bolts. So that's the top bracket, front and side. Now I took a quick look at these instructions and um, I have no idea where these, uh, some of these things are. I have, like, it's kind of hard to tell. I have to go kind of under there and take a look. But I'm not crazy about the 
way they cut they to trim the pasture mount you're using a one and a half inch hole saw and i'm gonna have to figure out if i'm able to measure out that and kind of figure out how to drill that it just looks kind of almost like a scary monster or something i feel like you could do something better with a cutoff wheel or dremel combination thing but um we'll see we'll see what we're going to use for that i'm not sure yet um, but one thing I did notice is that when you go to put everything together, start reinstalling stuff, so this is the last fit step of removal, install the top spacer bracket using the four provided bolts, I'm assuming those are the ones provided, and apply anti-seize to the bolts before fitting. The problem is, is the factory torque um, settings, and if you look at the last page here, it says tighten all bolts to factory settings. Um, if you look at the factory torque information of course i don't have it there oh it's over here shout out to jake or x or whatever his name is on the trx forum for putting this awesome chart together and for to james for sending me the torque values um, that are consistent with this uh table here so these three apply thread locker to bolts so to me how are you going to apply anti-seize to some and Loctite to others? Maybe you just apply Loctite to the factory bolts and then anti-seize to the ones that are included in the kit, maybe. But then how do you resolve step 15, which says refit with the two factory bolts removed and use the factory bolts and apply anti-seize to the factory bolts. So if the OEM Mopar service manual requires thread locker on those, then what are we supposed to do? Obviously, we're not going to put Loctite and thread locker. So, me, I'm a gorilla, so I'll probably just use anti I mean, uh, Loctite on everything, but I'd like to try and do it right, so we'll have to figure it out as we go. But um, instructions look pretty good so far. We're going to get under there and um, we're going to remove the bash plate, which is a total disaster because it's been bashed up so much, it was really hard to get back up there. I had, uh, I think I just made a little quick uh, tip of the day video with my big crescent wrench where I bent some of the tabs down to refit the bash plate because everything's so bashed up. It's hard to, it's hard for everything to, to line up. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and remove this bash plate and then we're gonna remove the, this skid plate and possibly remove the back two bolts on that skid plate. And then we'll have a look at, uh, at everything and see how our front diff breather extension is uh, is doing as well. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, so the bash plate has been removed and let's take a look under here and see what we see. Always a good idea to check your oil cooler while you're down here. Can't tell you how many times I've looked at this guy and it's been completely caked in mud. So for anyone who does any off-roading at all, this thing is a magnet for mud. Done, remove next two bash plates. So it's got us removing this one and the tranny one. Okay, I'm not sure why, but. Oh, and then we gotta remove the cross member. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so you know what this is, two 16s over here, two or three of them down there. I'm not gonna video this, I'll be back in a minute. All right, so we've got the tranny skid removed. And there's the tranny. And so now we need to unbolt and remove the cross member. So we've got two on each side. So one, two, one, two. And that is going to um, allow us to, I don't know, move to the next step. <laughs> All right, hopefully you can see that. So we've got, this is a 18 fits really well here. And a 15 on the front. Let's see. It's a beefy bolt. And now we just need that last one to come out so we can get the cross member out. 
There we go. Okay. You know what I'm gonna do is because I'm. Oh, it already did. I was gonna say I'm gonna mark which way is the front because I feel like it matters, and it does. Front. Okay, so I don't need to mark it. All right, so cross member is coming out. Look at that, that's kind of funky. I feel like that could have been made a little better, but I wonder if the passenger driver side is that way. Yeah, it is. Okay. Weird. Okay, all right, so let's look at the instructions. All right, so unbolt, remove, cross member, done. Four. Now this is where we're supposed to trim the cross member mount on the passenger side to allow clearance for the when the diff, oh, I'm reading it and I'm not even showing to you, for when the diff is dropped down. You will need to drill out a 38 millimeter hole, which is one and a half inch, 15 millimeter in, 15 millimeter across. So, let me see here. We can figure out, why would it be on the passenger side? I don't feel like that's right. I feel like it's gotta be driver side because Look at where the sticker is. Basically, think. I mean, look at the. This is look at the lowest point of the diff right now, right? It's um, it's gone. I don't know, a good thumb, you know. But um, if this is dropping, then this is probably the lowest point where it needs to be uh, shaved. So we got to cut like a chunk out of here. All right. Well, we're gonna figure that out. We're gonna we're gonna mark it. I think it's like right here. We're gonna mark it up and uh, we'll be back. If you guys haven't already seen this, this thing is pretty sweet. This is a Phoenix. Um, I don't know the model number on it. That's the information there. It's a magnetic lantern guy that um, has spot and flood. Oh, it's a CL27R. And uh, definitely low profile and definitely provides a ton of light. Worth checking out for sure. Well, that doesn't seem right. Uh, it seems too small. Well, maybe not. 15 mil there and 15 mil here, I believe, is what the instructions are saying. But that hole that they def that they drill definitely looks bigger than that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to skip ahead, and I'm going to start removing some of these bolts here, and just to see, make sure we can get all those removed or most of them removed before I start hacking things up. Because if we can't get them removed, then there's no point in doing any of that. So we'll be back. All right, so it took us a few minutes, but we figured out where these two bolts are. Remove the two bolts at the top of the diff and unclip the loom. So they're both, the heads of the bolts are both on, um, you can see them from the passenger side. And so I will see if I can, so here's the back one. This is technically bolt um, one. So if you're looking up, you can see all right. Uh, I get the camera in there. Maybe. All right. Up there. Hopefully you can see that. Basically, it's going to be hard to get something on there, but you can see it's right up there. And then the other one is technically bolt number two. You can see is right. Jeez. Hopefully you can see. He's right up there. Seven. You can see from here um, a little easier of where they are. So here's one right here. And then the other one's just right behind it on the other side. Um, one thing I did notice while I was down here is my new AC compressor right here had a little, has a little oil. I can drip a little bit of. I don't know what I don't know what this little thing is here, but I had a little. See, you can see a little oil on it. And uh, if anyone knows what in the world that could be from, let me know. Please drop a comment so I can um, sleep better tonight. <laughs> you definitely can't get a ratchet on there unless you're using maybe a three eighths drive, maybe um, size 18. 18 mil fits pretty well. Um, we're gonna put a pipe on it and uh, this is coined um, from pocket jiggy and we're gonna see if we're able to crack it open oh geez I'm whacking the ah the pipe's too too small for the I'm hitting the camera oh my goodness
What's up guys, if you find this video entertaining in any way, go ahead and mash that Chuck Norris button for us. Still working on bolt number one, but basically it's gonna take, um, you can use a ratchet for a little while until the bolt, until you're kind of body bound, but then you're gonna have to use a wrench and a flexible closed uh, head wrench is gonna be the money maker here because there's a ridge on the diff that kind of prevents you from getting the closed end of a wrench on so you got to use the open end for a couple turns and then after that you can use the closed end of a ratcheting wrench and we can see we almost got this bolt out so almost done with bolt number one in like I don't know four hours no like one hour <laughs> all right so bolt number two at the top, you can access from, with a 3 8 drive, an 18 millimeter socket for a little while. And then you can see we're gonna get body bound up there as well, so. This guy was not all that tight, so I didn't have to break him loose or anything, but you can see hopefully his bolt threads are up there. And, I, and guys, I'm just holding the GoPro up, hoping that you can see something. Oh, it's really hard to do this while you record, so. If I had a lift, it'd be different, but. Yep, we're almost done with uh, the first uh, removal step. Our current status is severely stuck. <laughs> we are body bound with our with our wrench and we can't get anything up there to, I'm gonna have to pry it out somehow. Um, so now we're on step nine. Remove the four bolts that mount the bracket to the top of the diff. And I was looking at this and saying, hmm, are there bolts above those bolt heads somewhere? So I was racking my brain trying to find them, but no, they're not. So these are the ones that you need to remove right here. Uh... All right, so these are 18s. Get them with a uh, 3 8 drive with a 18 mil regular socket with a extension or a deep socket if you want. There's one and then the big one, I don't know what size that one is yet, so. Then I'm gonna figure out what size that one is. Just a second. And there's one that I wanted to figure out what size that one is. Just a second. And there's one that I wanted to figure out what size that one is. Hopefully it doesn't fit right. Hopefully. Slightly corroded. And there's three of them. Now we need to figure out what size that big one is. What's up guys, if you haven't already, definitely check out the links in the description below. We've got lots of cool discount links, discount codes for a lot of awesome companies. I'll leave you to the rest of this video guys and thanks for watching. All right, so I got my half inch drive, extendable Harbor Freight special, and I've got a 21 deep socket and this is the right size, so. That's a beefy bolt. So now we're gonna do step 10, remove the two bolts that mount the bracket to the bell housing. Well, we've hit a roadblock. I cannot get this bolt off, even using my 200 foot pound impact, which is like about the biggest, smallest thing I can fit up in this little space. Oh, all right, you hear it? Okay, here we go. I don't know what that thing is torqued to, but it's definitely not coming off. Well, we're resorting to the 800 foot pound mega gun here to see if I can get this thing off. Even we also did those methods. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi, Bear. Bear. Hi. Hi, Bear. Hi, me, Stabe. Oh my goodness, dude. Ah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Good yes. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I got it. 
All right, you see what I'm doing? It's almost out. I'll be back in a second. Uh, you can see why it's so, so hard to remove. It's all corroded. That's why it was so jacked up. Now, here's the bracket. I'll figure out how to kind of get this thing down somehow. Oh my goodness, there's like sand missiles coming down. Yeah, I think this definitely is easier with the sway bar removed. So I'm happy I had removed that for my own personal uh, enjoy. Remove the brackets and bolts for and retain for future use. So now we're on step 12. Or almost, yeah, step 12. Oh, the last two bolts on the driver's side. These are the last two bolts and should allow the diff to float on the drive shafts. Right up there. Those two bolts. Yep, 18 mils. All right, those two bolts and then this thing's floating. Here you go. Take this, watch your head. Are there any more injuries? Hi, kitty. Hi, Dad. Okay, take this ratchet. Ten those two bolts. Yeah, right there. Yeah, you gotta make sure it stays on there straight, like that. See, go. Yeah, keep going. It's gonna take you three hours to do it at this rate, sweetheart. Swing that ratchet, man, come on. There you go. There you go. Three days later. There you go. Okay, okay. Really? Oh. Oh, pull up. Okay, bear. Hi. Okay, bear. Bear, you're taking the instructions with you, man. Dude, you take it. Bear, come on, you take it. Oh, dude. I like there's a little bit of Loctite or something on there. But there's not. It's just corrosion. I'm, uh, I'm wondering what, uh, where we're supposed to use Loctite because the directions said, oh, whoo, whoo, okay. Oh, it's floating. <laughs> yep, and it's whacking. Oh boy, hopefully I didn't just bash my, oh man, make sure I didn't bash my boot in. No, boot's okay. All right, I need to put something there to buffer it a little bit. Zip locks keep it from uh all right and then this guy is clearly what uh we need to cut so i will unfortunately have to either push that back up and put that bolt back in or um get a jack and uh and jack it up because we have no way to cut that now that it's touching Oh, you whacked your head? You gotta be careful, man. Oh, no. Huh? Ow. Ow, are you okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Are you busting up the, uh, the mud, the mud missiles? See, Daddy, yuck. Oh, yeah, nice. Good job. If you put it on, yeah, that's the head. Yep, that'll do it. Okay. Cut. Yeah, we got to cut a big chunk out of the cross member here. So, moving that over. So that's the washer you're moving. If you want to take the bolt out, you got to touch it by the head of the bolt right there. Yeah. Oh my goodness, are you taking my bolt out? Got Rick. it. You got it, Reagan. You sneaky little devil. Don't lose it, okay? Okay. Then that. I don't know why I just wouldn't use like a G5 
jigsaw or something to just cut that out as like a instead of hole sawing because hole sawing I run the risk of going into the thing yeah straight on go righty tighty yeah yeah exactly yeah good job keep going push it up now go righty tighty you gotta turn the bolt head turn the head of the bolt right here turn this like this yeah that's good it's good all right <clears throat> I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it but we're gonna take a cutoff wheel and we're gonna just I like this idea better than a hole saw I'm just gonna slowly just kind of fire in there and uh, see if we can kind of just grind that thing down should be Assuming I don't hit the diff, should be relatively seamless. All right, here we go. All right, let's take a look here. Um, this is not a high powered uh, cutoff wheel, it's very Bobo Jones, but um, yeah, I mean we're making a notch there. I will say though, it is pretty nerve wracking taking a cutoff wheel to uh, something that's you know an inch and a half, two inches away from your diff. So I'm running into the problem where my um, I'm not able to get in because of this part right here. So I may have exhausted my cutoff wheel ability. Let's see what happens. So here we go. Metal cutting bit. Let's see if we can do some damage with this guy. Ow! My knee. Oh, I just whacked it. Oh man! Oh man! Hey, this is Wobble City, man. No. Oh man, dude. Whacked my knee, broke my bit, my glasses are fogged. Here we go. Sanding bit. And this one, don't want to end up nicking my dip. Oh, having this. Oh, my knee. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this friggin' bolt. Oh, oh, my knee. Take a look. Oh. Is it done? Uh, not yet. Gotta go a little more into this corner here and this corner there. I'm in a way. Hi, Mr. Wee. Hi, My brain Hi, is melting. Hi, Jago. Hi. What do you got? Oh, big planet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wee. 3.28 a.m. All right, well, it's now dark outside, as you can see. Um, we are close. We're definitely to the uh, past the 15 mils each direction at least at the, the second half here and over here. Probably have to go a little more in here, but the pictures 
the finished product on the photos definitely has more cut out. See how far it goes. It goes past the cutout, goes past the first hole, and our cutout goes past the first hole, maybe only up here, barely. Here we go. So we need the solid on track top spacer bracket and bolt in place with four uh, M1235s, which hopefully are threaded in. So if you look, you can see it right here. It's not uh, bolted in yet, but this is the way it goes. Or not locked tight, we'll put some anti seize on. And we're gonna pass these bolts in and just finger tight for now. And we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we've got the top two in. Just, just literally just fingered in there just a little bit. Because remember, I don't know if I need to shave this down some more. So I'm just kind of want to just eyeball things. So I got those two in. These ones are passed through. They're not threaded. Now the bottom two are threaded. So we need to put the um, these two guys in. And as you can see, the diff needs to go up quite a bit. So hopefully we'll be good here. So I'm going to get those in and... Uh, We'll see how everything looks. So because the diff is free floating right now, and it's not like it can kind of do forward, back, left, right as much as it wants, I'm having a hard time getting the holes to line up because as you can tell, it's kind of cockeyed. I'm trying to get the holes for the bottom bracket here to line up. You can see they're off by a little bit there. So I'm trying to finagle it. Um, but it's proving to be a little tough. I'll leave you on here for a minute and you can, I don't know if you can see, you can kind of see me struggle a little bit. <clears throat> this, I was using the four jack, it was helping, but now it's kind of hurting, so I don't know. Let's see. I think the front one is closed. Oh, shh. Okay. So you can see they're not lined up. This, thing, this bolt just needs to go back more. Hopefully you can see that. Day two. Right, what's up guys? We're back at it for another day. Um, the drive shaft or the dip drop um, kit. So we left off yesterday. We had done all of the removal steps and we had just um, finished trimming this or doing a preliminary trim. And I said, all right, well, let's put, let's put a bracket on top and let's see what it looks like. And I fumbled around with this for like, for like two hours straight bashing it all up trying to get it um, to get the top mount to line up and it just doesn't and I think it's because of this top this uh, higher piece right here I think this whole thing needs to be shaved down that's what I'm gonna do today and hopefully it lines up but every time it was just bashing into this and I couldn't get it to come a little lower to get the bolts to mount so or to line up so um, and also during that time, and you guys can hopefully drop a comment and let me know, but um, we have this right here. You can see a little bit of grease there. The uh, drive shaft here, this little drive shaft was kind of going forward and backwards with the diff, and I don't know if this is supposed to be like this, but you can basically see um, splines there, which I feel like is not right, but I don't know. Maybe one of you guys can let me know if this is normal. Cause this whole thing goes forward and backwards, you know, about a half an inch there. So I don't know if I F something up. So if you can drop a comment, let me know if I have uh, bigger problems now, but yep, we're going to grind this thing down some more and, um, and then hit it with some spray paint and hopefully we can, um, get this thing mounted up today. All right, there it is. There's the piece. It's like double layered there. See? That's the piece. We need to come. I think now we'll be good. I'll round out some edges and smooth some things up. The second version. We uh, I just got rid of this section here. That had like the double high right there. And we smoothed everything out. Hopefully you can see. And um, I'm not gonna spray paint it yet because I don't know for sure 
whether it's um it's done or not because the picture still has this going in much farther to like all the way to the past the circle so past the hole so oh, I might still have to cut some more still not enough I can't get that fourth bolt installed right here see how low it is compared to the threads I need to be able to roll the diff a little bit and I can't do that because I still have to cut more of this out over here all right so I had to break out the big guns and the sweater in the summer in Florida because I'm getting sprayed what's up girl Hi. Hi. I like your homework. You like my what? Your homework. My homework? Yeah. What's my homework? Yes, boo. Oh, my helmet. Ah, yeah, my helmet's got flames on it too. Huh? Yeah. Cool, yeah. We have success. Let me save everybody the most painful, oh my goodness, ever. Use. The same trusty flathead we used to um, to wedge into the flywheel for the Predator pulley install. Oh my goodness, we had three out of the four bolts in. And the fourth one would not line up. That bottom right here would not line up. It was like a, like a half a millimeter off. And so on the from the driver's side, take your, your big flathead and just wedge it in, um, depending on whether you want to go down like this or up like this, and then we just pushed it like this, pulled down and popped it up just a tiny bit. And now we got our four, final fourth bolt in. All four of them are officially in. Look at this Bobo Jones concoction we've had here. Oh, we got the drive shaft back in its home. Still see a little bit of grease, but no uh, splines or anything. So, wow, man. Okay, now on to the next step finally. <laughs> I'm so excited. All right, so this is step 14. Yes, Reggie? All right, so this guy goes on top. One, two, three. Okay, so up there is where it goes. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, keep going, Reggie. It's just a long bolt. Okay. Well, it feels good to knock out one... Uh, and one, I just put it uh, one more step. I like it out. You got to keep uh, loosening it, lefty loosey. Uh, two bell housing with two factory bolts removed. Bolt the factory bracket to the on track spacer with three factory bolts. Apply anti seize the bolts. Keep finger tight for now. Okay, so the next step is that uh, oh, that thing, that weird bracket guy. How in the world does this thing go? I don't remember. Well, obviously, the triple part goes there and then where does the other part go so I just put these two in one right here and then one up there where my finger is right here and then one down here okay so now that's the factory bracket now I gotta find a way to secure it to the spacer so right now I'm trying to figure out, um, we need to put the three, yeah, we need to put the three factory ones in, but there was a fourth one, a really big one that points the other way, it gives it some side to side lateral rigidity. This is, does not appear to be, we don't appear to be rebolting that one in, which makes me a little nervous. Why wouldn't we bolt that back in? See, it says, Fit the on track back spacer with the three M12s, got it. And then refit the factory spacer to the bell housing with the two, and then bolt the factory bracket to the on track spacer with the three factory bolts. Where's that fourth one? Lined up somehow. Watch your head, okay? okay? I think we got them all lined up. See up there, hopefully. See these little teeth? Take one hand, one hand, and then tear it apart like that. You do it. I got anti seize all over my hands. Yeah, pull. Ah, there you go. You did it. Good job.
there's a space between it. Okay, good. All right, so we've got it started. We've got the bracket started. We've got the three bolts up there started, and the two in the back here started. And I've got my trusty associates with me. Hello. Hello. And we're going to see the next step in the list. Oh, we smeared that anti seize. Now we can't see That's the picture. <laughs> to apply anti seize. Okay, I did. Oh, the side. We're, okay, so we're on the side spacer now. This is the side spacer, and it goes over there somewhere. Let's see. Okay. So you see that chin up there? Yeah. I gotta get that to that with this with this spacer. Okay, so it's gonna go. There's no um. What is that thing on this thing? It's a bracket. Yeah, but like this. Come on, man. It's a bracket. Oh. Yeah, it's an L, and we know the L needs to go up there. Oh, so is that a new one? Yep. This ah. is the this is the final part of the diff drop. Ooh, what's so a diff drop? We're dropping the differential. This is the differential. We're dropping it. Oh, so it's gonna drop on my head? Nope. We're just lowering it down an inch. Good idea. Why does why are we low why would we lower something down an inch? This is a complicated question. Um, if we if we lower there it, might um because there might be not enough space because right here. Um, not enough. No, there was more space and I lowered it, so I had to trim that to make space to lower it. Oh. Yeah. Interesting, huh? Yeah, very interesting. Why would I lower it? And you know what else? When we lower it, we might lose ground clearance. What's because ground clearance? ground clearance, the ground the space between the ground and the bottom of our truck. Mm -hmm. That if we have more ground clearance, we can get over bigger rocks. Yeah. If we have less ground clearance, we can't get over big rocks. So why so would I do something? Chan, we just got Okay, you're good. Why would I do something that would lower this, force me to Dad, have to I break like this one. have to oh nice, Dad, have to cut Dad, this. Like this. Very one. nice, Reggie. Have to cut this and lose ground clearance. Why would I do that? You're never gonna guess it. Can I tell you? Yes. See these? These yes. boot, boot guys here? Uh -huh. Those are our CV axles? Yeah. If we lower this, it makes these happier. Happy? And they're less likely to break. Ooh, mm -hmm. I like that. Yes, me too. Them. But I may have also just trashed the boots um, while I was doing this. So we yeah, boy. I know. <laughs> All right, so we gotta put the bracket up there. All right, thread this in. Like that. Don't touch the anti seize. Chan, okay. you gotta use some neck muscles and some ab muscles to get your bum up there, okay? I've been doing this for two days straight. Thread it in there, but don't don't let it fall on your face. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Unscrew that. <laughs> you silly. Ouch. Reagan, why are you doing Unscrew that? Unscrew it. Chandler, me? focus. Unscrew that bolt. It's got to go into the top bolt, silly. Oh. Otherwise, you're threading nothing into nothing. So here? Yeah. Okay. And now... Wait, where does it go? Yes. Now screw that bolt in. Cozy spot? Yeah, cozy spot. Good. Now push the bolt in, and then and then once you get it lined up, you're gonna thread it in. Too far. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that looks like it close. Jiggy it around until you get the hole in, until you get that bolt in the hole. Okay, I think it's in. Yeah, you feeling a little like engagement there? Yes. Okay, tighten it. What are you doing? You have a neck cramp? Yeah. You've been down here for 30 seconds, man. <laughs> Come on. Screw that bolt into the hole. Is it is it engaging? Yeah, it's hard. Well, then it's not good. If it's hard, it's not good. Let me feel it. That's not hard. That's perfect. That's nice and <sighs> snug. Okay, get the other one. Okay. Come on, girl. Oh, There's four name. of them. Come on. Uh, Chan, there's a reason why I had it like that, so it was recording. Oh. It's not recording your shorts, man. Oh. <laughs> this kid, dude, I swear. You're insane. <laughs> 
<laughs> Recording your shorts, literally. <laughs> you can rest on me. Pillow. Come on, use me as a neck pillow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not gonna waste that. You just cracked the camera. Oh my goodness. Give it to me. You're fired, man. You're fired. Give it to me. Oh, dude. Oh, look at it's cracked. Oh. <laughs> you gotta take this hand and put it on the bracket to jiggy it while you do it. Yes. Yes, using your core. Look at the little core you got. Are you tightening? It doesn't seem like you've got engagement. You think you need to get your bum back it, up there. It's tightened. See? Oh, I thought it was that one. Here you go. I thought it was really put working. It in. No. You put, you tighten this one? Oh, no, yeah. Chan, then you just made it much harder to, to thread the other one in. Silly, go. Come on, put it in. You put the bolt in. How did you lose track of which one you were screwing in? Come on. What is happening right now? What happened to my neck pillow? You don't have one. You need to use your core to get up there. Get up there, I'm gonna punch you. Come on, up. Knock, knock. Ouch. Is it engaging? Well, it's in the hole, I see. Is it tightening? I feel like it is. Yeah. We'll tighten the other one. This one? Yeah. got engagement on one. Can we get engagement on the other? Yes. There we go. Yes. The mystery fourth bolt, that's that big one, engaged. Okay. How's it look? Good. Indicted. How's it look? Good, good, good. Oh my goodness, the drive shaft looks okay. Oh, I think that's every one of them, right? Okay. That's it. Reclip the loom. Say hello. The Refit the cross member, hello. Oh, the, uh, the bash plate, that's fine. Hello. All right, so the instructions on 14 tell you to put that in and keep finger tight. And then, um, and you tighten it later, basically. So how am I gonna get to the bolt, to the Allen head bolts, when this bracket, the factory one, is on top of it, even if it's finger tight? It's not possible. You can maybe get to one of these, maybe, but you can't. Clearly this bracket has to be tightened down, secured all the way tight before you put this one on because you're never gonna be able to get to those, those heads. So that's kind of a miscue for sure. Hopefully the alignment matches up because I've got to remove this whole thing now. Daddy loves you. All right. Okay. Oh. Come on, man. Need a... And you it. Okay. Whoa, nice. Ah. You okay? Yeah. So, this, all right, so I went ahead and tightened down the three bolts, 10 millimeter Allens that go to the spacer here. As you can see, they're recessed in and they're not really easy to get to or can't get to them at all once this is even remotely installed. Um, it was really hard to get all the bolts back in but all the bolts are threaded in a little bit. Um, but you can see this is pretty tight. And if I try and tighten these, it's gonna wanna pull the threads out of this thing. So I'm gonna need to find a way to kind of shimmy things a little bit. Um, oh, also I was able to actually get, I don't know if this is good or not, but I was able to get the original bolt back in. This big guy here, goes into the motor mount. Um, doesn't say that in the instructions, but uh, makes me much happier that that thing is in, so. All right, so. You're gonna have to play around with the floor jack and jacking it up in different areas. Not too hard, just a little. I was finally able to get this almost snug, almost flush. Um, this bolt still needs to come down some, but um, before it was got a quarter inch or so gap. So now we're we're much more in business and uh, the drive shaft still looks good. All right, now we'll snug this guy up. And then just gotta snug up that big one up there, which is a 21. Snug up the rest of the bolts, which is gonna be a real problem um, for the 
gallons that are here on the other side because there is almost no room to work. I'll show you what I mean. Oh, you can see it maybe there. This one I can get something on, but this one I can't. I'm gonna have to take a 10 mil Allen key and turn it into a stubby or something. There's just not enough room to get an, uh, at least an Allen head socket in there by any stretch. So I think we should start snugging those up though because those are the main ones at the top. So that's what we're gonna do and we'll be back. So a pro tip workaround for your Allen wrench being too long. Maybe a stubby might work here, but I used a little, uh, a little fitting like for your your driver um, and it a six millimeter or quarter inch wrench will work on that and I've got a 10 mil on that side so it's six mil to 10 mil Allen and that works to tighten things down but you got to go real slow but I'm hoping once I get a little farther I'll be able to get an actual Allen wrench in there we'll see <sighs> pro tip number two get yourself a cheap little pipe that you can slip on the Allen and you can get a lot more leverage once you get it on <laughs> because without it torquing those things to 81 foot pounds with a short stubby Allen wrench is going to be nearly impossible so cheap pipe for the win oh my goodness All right, I finally got everything really I finally got everything as tight as I can and I um, tried to paint pen. Sorry, I got my dog it's literally attacking me. Best as possible. There's the front. Here's the side, the passenger side mount. And then hopefully you can see inside there to see the uh, the top mount in the front. <coughs> Excuse me, Brent. Hi. There's the mount up there the red and then over here I can't even get open no 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 excuse me here's the back side of the top and the you can see all the marks here I even checked the drive shaft okay hi there hi okay really okay and here's the passenger side top or passenger side um, rear. Here's this. I hope you can see everything. And so this is how it's currently sitting. I just got to um, uh, spray paint this guy here, and um, and then I'm gonna put the cross member back on here. And then I'm going to see. I might take it for a ride at that point because I don't need to put any of these other uh, skid plates or anything on, um, unless I know for sure that it's uh, everything's good. So stand by for confirmation. All right, we finished <clears throat> the diff drop install on the T-Rex and we're going to take it off the ramps. And once I do that, I will take a measurement of the CV clearance from the same thing I did before from the uh, right next to the CV boot to the ground in the exact same spot on the driveway before I drive it around for a test drive. And then I'll put the um, bash, uh, the skid plates on that I measured from and do uh, another set of preliminary measurements just in case, because if I have to space the skid plate down with the spacers, then we'll have a less ground clearance, obviously. So here we go. So I measured it from right here, you see, from right here, down to the ground. But we're at, oh man, I don't remember them being this uh, this high, but I really have no recollection. So 17 and right about three quarters on the driver. Hopefully you can. Passenger. We're at, we're at 18, so a little higher over here. 
But now that we're on the ground, let's take a look at it from the front. It almost looks like, man, it looks like the CVs rolled backwards, almost. Like, it looks like it's farther back right there than it was before. But as far as parallel to the ground, they're definitely better. But I don't know why they look like they, they rolled back. Maybe I messed something up. But man, they are, geez, they're very close to level with the ground, parallel to the ground, much better than before. I mean, that's, I can, there's a little bit of space between pretty much every single one there, except maybe the last one. That's looking way better. But I wonder if it rolled back a little bit. I'll show you the clearances here. I mean, there's definitely plenty of clearance between the, the shock um, module guy. There's a solid thumb between the CV and the thingamajig on the driver's side, and then on the passenger side. Uh, there's about a thumb there too. And then plenty of clearance between there. So I just feel like, and, and looking at it like this, it definitely looks like the whole diff went back a little bit because it looks like everything is coming from here. It's kind of like bowed like that, and then it angles back that way towards the wheel. I see this side. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's the way it's supposed to be or what, but let me see if I can take a look from behind a little bit. This is the driver's side. Yeah, it looks like. I mean, that is way, way less uh, angle on the CV for sure. I don't know if the camera will capture it, but as far as the angle, the dangle was like this, and now it's like that. So I guess we'll have to see the measurements though. And then here's the passenger side. The diff definitely sits lower than the, the cross member by a little bit. See, I got like seven hours of footage that I'm gonna have to try and cut down. Oh man, this is uh, definitely a two person job if you have um, somebody to help. Um, you can do it as one person, but man, it is, it's, it's a rough one. I think it's harder with the, the two and a half, 2.7 inch lift in the front because um, it puts more stress like on everything and makes them, um, you know, everything kind of harder to get back into place. I know James told me when he put the new front diff in or the new CVs in that they had a lot of stress, a lot of pressure on them because there was such high angles. So um, obviously the differential is one source of that stress, the main one. Um, so now that we've dropped it, it's definitely a lot less stress, but uh, I guess we'll find out. So um, yeah. I'm going to do a test drive and we'll be back. I don't know, like 40 or 50 mile an hour real quick. And see how it does. Make sure nothing breaks or snaps. It's driving pretty straight. I know the company said that you don't need a uh, alignment, but Rath Motorsports said that, uh, sent an email saying you might want to have your shop do an alignment afterwards. You yeah. should get an alignment done after you put nitrogen in your tires too. <laughs> Drives just as straight as before. Or as crooked as before, <laughs> I should say. Yeah. I mean, I feel good enough to take it on a, take it for a run, so. How about I, maybe I can pop this curb real quick. Give it a little jostle. Yeah. All right, here's a little off-road, little grass. A little curb. All right. If something was gonna break, maybe it would do it now, I don't know. So we'll, uh, we'll take another look underneath when we get back and um, and then we'll try and refit the skid plates back on, 
which may take some spacers. And um, so we'll video that and then we'll piece together the eight hours of footage. All right, we'll be back. All right, so I added just the, uh, oh man, just the one little quarter inch spacer guy, this one. And the diff is already touching the skid plate. I can't slide the instructions under at all. So I have just the quarter inchers in the front and then I have a quarter incher in the back passenger and then the half inch guy, one of these right here. And that gives enough space for the instructions folded twice to fit nicely under the diff. So I think that's probably the way I'll leave it. And that way it's still pretty flush and tucked in at the front. It's not popped down. And then yeah, it's tucked to, it's, it's popped down a little bit here, but you know, by the time I hit a rock or something, it'll already be, unless I'm going backwards uh, reversing, then this might catch an edge. So the diff drop is installed and so is the differential skid plate and we'll do a quick measurement i did add a quarter inch spacer on each corner except for the back right so the back driver has a half inch spacer that they included so let's do our measurement at the um, same spot that i did before which is right here at the front we are at 15 and a half at the front, and then I think I did a measurement at the rearmost bolt in the middle here, and that is now 14 and 5 eighths. So I'll have to compare that to where we were at before. So we lost a little bit of ground clearance there, but here only quarter inch spacer, so not much at all. So uh, definitely worth it in my opinion, for sure. Tell 